Hello, everybody, and welcome, and thank you for joining this session on cemetery documentation. Um, today's session is part of our ongoing webinar series uh, for the 2020 Old Mine State Summit, and thank you so much to our speakers for being with us today. My name is Jessica Felt, and I am the Preservation Initiatives Manager at Preservation Maryland. We just have a little housekeeping before we get into our speakers. Um, as I said, this is part of our ongoing webinar series. Um, so I do hope you will check out um, in our website, which is preservationmaryland.org, or you can go to oldlinestate.org uh, and uh, you can find sessions and recordings of um, both our recordings of our past sessions and information about upcoming sessions. I'm sorry, it should be oldlinestatesummit.org. Let me get that website correct. Um, I also want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, uh, Whiting Turner, the Maryland Historical Trust, Worcester Eisenbrandt, Brennan and Company, um, and the Middendorf Foundation. Our sponsors, along with support from members and donors, make this program possible and able to present it uh, for free. And we really thank them for all their support. Um, today's session will start with my colleague, Ellie Cowan, who is our Director of Advocacy. And she will talk a bit about Preservation Maryland's recent work with the State Highway Administration on cemetery documentation. Then we will hear from Alex Keim, an archaeologist and archaeological laboratory manager working at the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration. Um, and then we will talk with Anastasia Polos, archaeolo archaeological sites planner for Anne Arundel County's Cultural Resources Division. And we really uh, appreciate all of our panelists for being with us today. Um, so just a couple little things before we get into the meat of it. I want to go over. Um, how you can ask questions. So you do have a question box. If at any point um, something occurs to you, uh, please do um, go ahead and answer that into that. We will have Q&A time at the end of it, but if something pops into your head, please feel free to ans uh, answer that into the question box at any time. Um, also, you will see some handouts here, uh, some resources that are available um, that you can look at. We will also be posting links to the resources throughout the program. So um, keep one eye on that as well for some handy things to help supplement what you'll be hearing from our speakers. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Ellie. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Jessica. Um, uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Today, you know, it's a little over two weeks until Halloween, so it's very appropriate that we're having a, a session on cemeteries. Um, so at Preservation Maryland, um, we've really, uh, over the last few years, um, done a, a lot of work in recognizing how cemeteries, much like historic buildings, provide a real critical connection uh, to our past. Um, while being uh, present reminders of it. Um, and much like historic buildings, uh, cemeteries are uh, vastly important to preserve. Um, so Preservation Maryland has worked to support that preservation um, of Maryland cemeteries uh, in a number, with a number of partnerships over the years. Um, through our Six to Fix program, uh, we worked with the Coalition for the uh, protection of uh, Maryland burial sites. Um, we uh, worked with the State Highway Administration, as Jessica mentioned, as well as uh, with Anne Arundel County for another Six to Fix project that um, we've done on the documentation of Anne Arundel County's uh, historic cemeteries. So um, when considering uh, preserving cemeteries, the first step really is um, documenting where they are, the location. There are so many cemeteries across the state um, that we just don't know uh, where where they are. And so in order to um, preserve them, we really need to find out the locations and then assess the um, assess the conditions that those uh, cemeteries are in, whether they're in need of um, uh, you know, site cleanup of fencing for protection for from um, uh, you know people or think or um, even from uh, development. And so, with the State Highway Administration, uh, and Alex will talk a lot more about this. Um, we worked on a statewide cemetery documentation um, platform, digital platform 
a, a way to uh, crowdsource documentation of these um, historic cemeteries. Um, and then, so that's sort of at the state level there. And then also at the local level, we worked with Anne Arundel County with Stacey Poolhos, um on the county level and countywide documentation of Anne Arundel County's um, cemeteries. So um, both of the speakers today will share their approaches and discuss the challenges and the successes um, of documenting Maryland cemeteries. And um, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to discuss a little bit um, how both state and local jurisdictions across the state can work together and work proactively to protect these essential uh, historic resources. So without further ado, uh, I'll pass the mic on to Alex with the State Highway Administration. Okay, and let me just pull your presentation in here. Okay, it's all yours, Alex. <laughs> all right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for, for attending uh, this webinar. Uh, I was looking at the names. Uh, of the attendees in the little box on my computer and I, I know some of you and I wish uh, we could say hello in person but you're going to have to um, settle for while looking at my talking head for for about 15 minutes as I talk about cemetery documentation so I hope that uh, I hope that's all right with you um, yeah so I think I'm going to start talking today about kind of why the state highway got involved in this effort to document cemeteries uh, all throughout the state of Maryland um, and let's oh Nope, that's not what that button does. Let me let me try this. There we go. Okay, right button. Um, so why the state highway get involved? Um, you know, as a lot more land in Maryland gets developed, um, and there's increasing pressures in that a lot. Some of the things that we're finding is a lot of um, unrecorded uh, and sometimes unmarked cemeteries all throughout the state of Maryland, and that can be a real um, a uh, problem for developers and, and local politicians too, which is where we come in. And you can see here, this is an example in 2017 where um, uh, historically African-American church uh, uh, cemetery was threatened by development. Um, and you can see here too, and that led to, um, for instance, Montgomery County really um, being at the forefront of this, of this effort to uh, document the locations of cemeteries uh, for planning purposes and also um, uh, for planning for development and, and, and for historic preservation as well. Uh, and so kind of building on that, um, the chief archeologist at State Highway Administration, Dr. Julie Shablitsky, um, you know, thought, you know, uh, it comes up in road projects a lot, which as you can see right here, um, this is an example of a cemetery that was a road project impacted, but um, you know, that throughout the state, on our state roads, we, we encounter um, cemeteries and uh, not only for private developers, but for the state as well, uh, encountering cemeteries when you don't expect them can be a real um, can be a real problem. Uh, it can delay projects, it can threaten historic resources, it can really uh, negatively impact uh, local communities. Uh, and so it's a real effort for us to try to figure out where these cemeteries are so we can deal with them in an appropriate uh, an appropriate time and distance from a, from any project, as opposed to having a, someone put construction equipment in the ground. And digging out human remains, and then uh, no one's happy. The people who uh, are the descendants of the inter of the buried people aren't happy. The developers aren't happy. The construction crews aren't happy as they idle their equipment for months at a time. Um, so that's really uh, what. And and the state highway itself, uh, which I'm going to talk a little bit about later, has kind of some of the resources needed to to make this uh, to kind of tie together a lot of different resources about cemeteries. But first, I want to show you just an example of what we're talking about when we talk about a uh, these kind of cemeteries that need to be recorded. You can see this is outside of Maryland 32. This is out uh, outside of Guilford. Um, and you can see right here, this mysterious green patch in what is otherwise a, a commercial parking lot turned out to be, um, and you can see here, this is the as-built when they were expanding 32. This is an old plan. Um, and you can see right there, it says old cemetery and it's partially through the right of way of the highway. And so, what that looks like on the ground is in this in this parking lot is a big raised square thing that was basically covered in trees and five foot high green briars you couldn't see anything in some local interested people started started uh, taking interest in the cemetery and found some of these headstones on uh, this picture right here in the upper left you can kind of see this is partially cleared um and down the lower right you can see what it looked like when we totally cleared it we actually had a, um, a state highway crew come in and cleared all the green briars and you can see each of those green flags is the 
head of a probable grave shaft. And so what we thought were maybe a couple, maybe a dozen uh, marked graves turned into dozens and dozens, if not a hundred uh, unmarked graves here. And these are probably um, a mixture of local residents from the 19th century and also um, uh, African-American quarry workers. Uh, the, the gravestones themselves are, um, uh, these ones you can see right here are uh, pieces of quarried granite, surplus granite from the quarry that they used as grave markers. It's really interesting. Um, and they've continued to do research. They've done some ground penetrating radar. They, uh, the, the, you can see right here, this was buried, this headstone you can see right here. So this is this kind of things where, um, you know, what seemed like kind of an overgrown lot in the back of a parking lot is in fact, hundreds of interred individuals in a historic cemetery. Um, and so, so why does M.SHA get involved in, in cemetery documentation? Uh, well, there is no statewide database of burial grounds. Um, some counties have really accurate databases and some counties don't have, uh, don't have any databases at all about where burial grounds are in the county. Um, and some counties have instead, there's private organizations, genealogical, or, genealogical organizations, um, and they have extensive private uh, uh, databases of cemeteries, but sometimes that information is not uh, shared with the local government, um, with the planning boards or the or the county government. Um, and what State Highway also has is legal authority over state roads, which go through, um, you know, every part of the state. And so that's one way that the State Highway could um, kind of tie together for a statewide database is their kind of legal presence uh, in all, all parts of the state of Maryland. And so we're thinking about how can we create a database like this? And uh, the answer we came up with was using uh, GIS technology and using mobile devices on GIS technology. Uh, why would we use GIS technology? Um, researching and recording cemeteries, as some of you probably know, uh, having done it, is can be very labor intensive. And there really are, um, it's polite to say, modest resources available at the state, county, and local level for this kind of work. Um, but what people, what, what is available is one thing, the technology, that the mobile devices uh, and the proliferation of mobile devices means that most people have uh, powerful and, com and compatible technology to record lo location data and uh, information already in their pocket. That everyone already has the hardware needed to conduct these kind of surveys, or most people do. Um, and that cemetery survey and documentation is really already ongoing uh, across the individuals and groups across the state. Uh, and so, and so we, that's how we work to develop a, an application a web-based application was originally going to be an actual application on your phone, but now is actually all web-based, which makes it much simpler to use, uh, to give people the, the ability to uh, record this data. So working with Preservation Maryland, as Ellie mentioned, uh, we started a, a pilot program where we recorded the locations of 100 cemeteries uh, throughout the state that we knew just about where they were, but didn't have a lot of information about them, and then had someone go and use the app itself to record the location data and description data for all these cemeteries. Um, and here's a, this is a, what the, uh, the data of the cemeteries looks like when we came up with it. And so an example of, this is the example of the product of uh, both the, uh, the testing program, but also this is what the live data looks like now for our uh, cemetery um, inventory app, uh, which is a GIS, it's all GIS based, which your phone takes the GIS location and it gets translated into a data layer on the state uh, uh, ArcGIS uh, IMAP system. And this is what it looks like. Each of these stars right here is a different uh, cemetery, and you can see some of the cemetery information on the bottom of the screen. Um, just to pick one as an example. This is you can zoom in out here, um, and this is on Allegheny County. Here's one called the Hoblitzell Cemetery, which is actually on the state right away. So you click on this map, and this is the data that pops up, which is some of the information. Uh, you can zoom in on the map and put on the satellites. This is what it looks like. This uh, you can see, so you can really get down really detailed information about where these are from this data layer. This is an example of all the information that's recorded uh, in the app itself. So you can double click on it and this information all pops up. And also up, oh, light motion. Okay, guys, this is the, ah, there we go. Okay, we're back on. Uh, motion sensor lights here in the lab. Um, and so this is, you can also have, uh, the photographs are also available through that data layer. So you click on some buttons and here you can get the pictures. And you can actually see this, which you can barely see right here is this headstone right here. Um, and so it's really great. Uh, so this is what the end product looks like uh, starting at the end. And so what does it look like to record this? And if you were interested in participating in this or using this app rather, uh, what, what does that entail? I'm gonna talk about that briefly. Um, you have all been provided with 
a PDF of in instructions for signing up for the cemetery inventory uh, application. Uh, and also given a URL, if you click on that, it will get you to this page right here. There are detailed instructions on how to sign up in the PDF handout, so please uh, download that um, and, and follow the instructions or, and read about it. I'm gonna go over it really briefly. Um, there's a lot of different ways to sign up for the app, it's, uh, for the, to use the app. You can use a Google account, a Facebook account, an Apple account, a GitHub account, or you can create a new account uh, with ArcGIS if you don't want anyone else to know that you're spending your time uh, recording cemeteries. Um, so, and they, eventually you sign up for it, which again is in the PDF, very detailed instructions, step-by-step -step instructions. You get to this page, it says collect cemetery data. Um, you click on that and here, this is, and this is all on your iPhone, or on your iPad, or on your mobile device. This is all web-based. So you do not need to download a separate app. You just need uh, to open up a web, uh, to open up a website. So it's, it's really simple in that regard. Um, and you can see here too, this is a map of all the recorded uh, cemeteries so far that are in the database. Um, a big concern we've had, a lot of feedback we've gotten is people don't want to record the same cemetery twice. So this is a way you can do that. Although if you want to record the same cemetery twice, we wouldn't be mad. Um, different people have different strengths. Some people take great pictures. Some people have a lot of historical research. Um, but that's how you would know if you're taking the same cemetery twice. Um, and this is what the form looks like really quickly. Um, so this will show up on your on your iPhone or your iPad or your Android device. Um, and this is the information, which uh, the name of the cemetery, the address, the area, the location. You can kind of drag uh, this around to, to pinpoint the location, but it will also automatically go to where your phone says it is. Um, you can take pictures. This is the, the, in, the input for taking pictures. You can take as many pictures as you want and label them and, and provide description information. Um, a really powerful part of the, using this app is the ability to take a lot of photos and assign them to the record itself. Um, and then you also have information, and Stacy uh, is going to talk about some of this stuff too in, in, in the, uh, the app that she's working on uh, and the survey project that, she's, that she ha is working on. Uh, some of the, a lot of the same information, condition information, uh, where is it, how accessible is it, um, as in do you need to drive there, can you walk there, um, is the cemetery active, how old are the most recent markers, this kind of information. Uh, the idea being um, that to, for, for our purposes, we want to know where these cemeteries are and roughly what, what condition they're in. Are they in danger of, for instance, the headstones being knocked over and covered in dirt and then being you know, lost because they're no longer visible? Uh, or are these being made regularly maintained? So that way, if there comes a time we want to uh, have a maintenance project or say, you know, uh, what, what are some of the most threatened historical cemeteries in a county or in the state, we can look at our condition information and say, okay, well, these are the ones uh, that based on our survey really need some work or really need uh, to be recorded. Uh, and the other ones would be like, okay, this one has an active community of people who are upkeeping the cemetery. Uh, so we don't need to expend resources uh, on, on that. And so that's kind of the, so they're, they're much they're kind of broad questions about the cemeteries themselves. Um, yeah, and this is uh, my contact information. If anyone has any questions about it, um, I just want to speak briefly too about that. This what the state highway has done is create a tool. It's the uh, state highway cemetery inventory app. Um, it is not uh, a project per se of uh, recording cemeteries, but rather a tool you can use in your own individual or group projects of recording cemeteries. Um, so, and that was the idea about this too, which is trying to create a standard, uh, uh, kind of a standard for uh, collection information and also a standard of compatibility by creating this app, supporting it and letting people use it. And so if it's a very well done app, and I think it is, and if it's easy to use, and I think it is, um, people will want to use it and genealogical societies will want to use it, individuals will want to use it, and then it will become uh, in our in our vision, um, you know, one of the uh, kind of a standard for recording cemeteries throughout the state because it is this free app that's available, and uh, we store the data on our servers. Um, uh, now, there's other challenges too. Um, this is really is um, I like to describe it as a uh, little rascals Mickey Rooney let's put on a show kind of project here. Um, we do not have a lot of resources. Uh, we have Marshall. Uh, and Chad, who are JS guys, um, and they are really helpful. But we don't. And then there's me here in the lab. So we don't have a lot of resources. Um, so there's a lot of kind of big picture questions that we, we haven't worked out yet. There's a lot of, uh, like I said, some counties have very detailed information about 
uh, and some individuals about where cemeteries are throughout the state of Maryland. Big picture sense, in the future, we'd like to take those existing data and the data generated from this survey and put it all together in a, in a big synthetic database. So that way, if we're doing road, pro particularly if we're doing road projects, which is the point, we can say, okay, you're, you know, you're, at, you're planning to go through here and we know there's a bunch of cemeteries here. So we're gonna have to deal with that way ahead of time and plan that way ahead of time before the road goes in. Uh, and developers can, and a, and a tool that will be available for, for counties and for developers to say, okay, this is kind of an area we wanna develop are there cemeteries here? And we can say, yes, in fact, there are cemeteries here and we know about them. Like if someone took the time to go out uh, on, a, on a cold winter's day and, uh, and uh, you know, it's to sit there and type information on their phone. Uh, but then, you know, next year, five years, 10 years from now, uh, even if the cemetery is no longer visible, we're going to know that it's there and it's going to be protected um, because, uh, and so that's really the, the vision too here. It's really protect these things by by getting their location, so we have it recorded down. So even in the future, um, that that we can, uh, that that's a way of, of really protecting these. And there's other issues too about uh, the state is going to talk about about property access. That's an ongoing issue about privacy concerns, about people not wanting to share information about family cemeteries or with the public. And these are all um, issues that are, are important ones. And we've gotten a lot of feedback. We did a lot of public presentations. Uh, and it's important issues to people. And I think they're really important issues. Um, and we are we are working on them. But right now, um, it's really, uh, if you sign up for this, oh, I really thank you because you are helping test this. It's really a pilot program. You're really testing the software. Um, some people have had um, some issues signing up for it. But that's really working the kinks out of it. We're also some of the first people in the country to use the ArcGIS hub community system. For identification, um, for using it, which is really exciting. Um, but some some of those issues have to get worked out on the on the end of Esri. And my time is almost up. I'm looking at my stopwatch. So uh, if you have any other questions, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing them at the Q and A. Um, and again, this is the email I have. Uh, you can go write it down or go back or, or get it somehow, and uh, email me any questions you have. And thanks so much for listening. Uh, it's just funny talking to my computer screen, but uh, thanks, thanks for your time, and I'll talk to you to you a little bit later. Bye. Thank you so much, Alex. And yes, we will make sure um, the email that comes after will have people's contact information as well. So um, if you do want to kind of get in touch directly, um, and and we will have the Q and A time. Um, so I'm going to uh, hand this over to Stacy. Let me just wrap this over to you, and it is all yours. Take it away. Oh, you got to mute, Stacy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yay. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to be here today. Thank you all who are here to, to listen to us chat about protecting these endangered cemeteries. Um, documentation is the first step in doing that. So I'm really glad to have a chance to talk to you all about that. So uh, one of my main tasks, my job with Anne Arundel County's Cultural Resources Division is to actually uh, review all development plans that come in that might impact archeological sites or cemeteries. So I'm literally haunted by the thought of <laughs> You know, a cemetery being disturbed by um, by uh, development crews. So um, it's a daily daily concern of ours. So to do this, um, I'm going to actually click over to the next slide. Let's see if that worked. Hello. There we go. Might speed forward a few slides. <laughs> But uh, just to give you some context, uh, I work for a local government, so our concern is within the boundary of Anne Arundel County. Um, the city of Annapolis is its own jurisdiction, but we, we do maintain a, a list of cemetery sites that are in the entirety of Anne Arundel County that are known. Um, that's uh, about a list of 600 or so now that we have. We also have, um, uh, we're located right here with the Chesapeake Bay to the right, flanking us and the Pat Patuxent River on the west. And we're situated right between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. So we have a lot of state highways going through. So there's definitely some uh, overlap with uh, um, Alex's concerns with the state highway uh, inventory mapping. Uh, and uh, so we um, were currently, there we go. <laughs> 
currently trying to make sure that this inventory that we have is accurate, that we have all the cemeteries um, recorded that we need to know about, because if we don't know where it is, we can't protect it. And you can see in the headlines, these are uh, literally headlines read from the newspapers just in the past recent years. Uh, cemeteries more than anything, um, more than archeology span sites, even more than historic buildings are really sensitive hot topics. You really wanna um, deal with cemeteries carefully for obvious reasons. Um, so this is just to give you a sense of some of that imminent feeling of uh, their endangerment. And in Anne Arundel County, one of our biggest challenges is that we have so many unmarked graves. In, uh, in this county, we're looking at thousands of years of Native American occupation. And we also have some of the earliest settlement history in the country. Uh, so uh, we have over 1,700 archeological sites on record, um, many of which are affiliated with cemeteries or probably affiliated with cemeteries that haven't been found yet. So uh, this is a, a picture over there of Tina Simmons from the Anne Arundel Genealogical Society who's um, uh, made it her life's work along with her partner, Dennis Green, to document these cemeteries and uh, it's, those kind of partnerships that we are really counting on with the Anne Arundel Genealogical Society, with the state, with the community to get this information so that we can protect these sites. So uh, the dangers that these sites are facing are not just development, not just potential impacts from development, but also uh, just neglect and desecration, you know, these other factors that um, that happen because either they've been forgotten or lost or just people don't have the resources to care for them or interest. Um, uh, we also have uh, environmental factors that are a very big concern. As you saw on the map, we're surrounded by water. So coastal erosion and sea level rise are a very big issue in Anne Arundel County as it is throughout the state of uh, Maryland really. Um, and you might have heard a recent rumor on Facebook. This is an example of an instance where we did find a casket eroding out of a cliff and it had to be um, to be rescued. So this was an emergency um, rescue for the cemetery and there was an excavation that moved the cemetery back from the bluff's edge. Um, uh, the cemetery was located on the Chesapeake Bay and the uh, just the continuous erosion finally cut away to this historic family cemetery. Um, but recently on Facebook, there was a rumor that we had a floating casket <laughs> in, uh, in the Severn River. And unfortunately, that's a very valid concern because that is something that could happen. But luckily, that was uh, turned out to be a false alarm. But this is why we need to identify these cemeteries. And we also need to prioritize which cemeteries really need our attention. So we have, um, you know, in addition to sea level rise and coastal erosion, we also have stormwater flooding that has become an issue. And this was a recent a uh, recent problem for one of our uh, churches in uh, Arnold, um, the Asbury Broadneck uh, you know, uh, United Methodist Church, where they did have that uh, that impact. But in a way, this was a, you know it was a horrible impact, but it was a great success story because the community, the church community, rallied and they worked with the state to get stormwater grants and they did a lot of work to help protect the cemetery so it wouldn't happen again and did some stormwater management. So that's, those are our biggest challenges, is just maintaining and protecting these historic cemeteries. And a lot of times we don't really have the money to do that. So really the, the first step to do that is to um, document. Um, one of the other tools we have to also protect cemeteries are these regulatory tools that are available through government law. Um, unfortunately, they are rather limited um, and they have to go through certain triggers to be instated. Um, so for in terms of Maryland state law, we do have criminal statutes, um, you know, fines that are, can be leveraged if someone does desecrate a cemetery. Uh, we, um, we also have state enabling legislation for um, uh, and, uh, and also uh, means of access to the cemeteries. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But really the, the meat of the protections happens at the local level. For, um, for these cemeteries. And unfortunately, only a handful of county governments really have ordinances in place that protect these cemeteries. Anne Arundel County was one, uh, one of, if not the earliest in the state. Um, and we do have a uh, county codes that stipulates that cemeteries are to be preserved. They are to be left in place. That means we do not allow the movement of cemeteries um, and that uh, we, they need to be protected by easement and have a right of way. 
and also we include a 25 foot buffer. So that's um, that's the gist of our code and that's triggered during development review. So if I know a cemetery is there or I have information that there's high potential for it and that's one of the things we look at, then we can um, ensure that we do our due diligence before the development ever even happens so we can protect that site. Um, other uh, counties that have uh, uh, similar ordinances are Peachy County, um, uh, Montgomery County, Calvert County. Um, they all vary a little bit, but the gist is the same to protect those cemeteries. But unfortunately, it really is only a handful of our counties that have that tool. Um, the uh, majority of state law really focuses on the business end of active cemeteries. Those, those cemeteries where people uh, go and they buy a plot and they bury their, their loved ones and there's a perpetual fund. It doesn't really speak to these historic cemeteries that are 300 years old where descendants, there might still be descendants out there, but they have sp scattered to the four winds. Um, but it, it, so this is one of the um, big concerns we have um, is to just make sure we know where those cemeteries are so we can at least take that first step towards protecting them. So the way we do it in our office is we use GIS. I use it continuously. I sometimes dream in <laughs> bird's eye view <laughs> because I use it all the time. Uh, and uh, this, um, this system uh, helps us identify where sites have cemeteries and other assets that might be also impacted by development. So it's an interactive mapping database where you can have different levels of information. And this is how we, we are um, most effectively able to identify where areas of concern might be. So um, I think we're up to about 600 known cemeteries in our database. Um, about half of those have been documented so I know where they are. Unfortunately, the other half are um, cemeteries that haven't been verified. We have a historic source. We have an oral history. We have um, a, 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 like a secondhand report that there's a cemetery in this area. Someone saw tombstones 10 years ago. And so um, that's where we really get a challenge uh, in uh, maintaining our inventory. And that's one of our goals with our survey project is to try to refine some of those boundaries for this, all that noise. Like right here, you can see this big square. That is a boundary in our database that's identifying where um, a cemetery might be based on an, a historic uh, tract of land that was 300 acres or so. <laughs> so um, that that's problematic. And I love grass and I, I apologize to all who hate grass, but I have one here just to demonstrate a point. You know, our smaller um, cemeteries are the ones that are the documented cemeteries. You're not going to find a cemetery that's 300 acres um, wide. So uh, this is um, about half of our cemeteries uh, really are um, uh, un just unrealistically at, uh, broad in terms of how much space they're taking. And that takes up a lot of resources. We want to target our resources towards finding and documenting those boundaries of cemeteries as much as we can. Uh, so the rumor has it cemeteries are um, very problematic for us. So that's why we uh, developed a citizen preservation stewardship program because um, which is where we're encouraging, you know, through public engagement to use a cemetery survey form that uh, would identify where these cemeteries are and, and uh, specific elements of you know the condition so we can actually get that information and start refining but also to grab the cemeteries we don't know about <laughs> so this was developed as a uh, way of having that communication that two-way communication um, and has really uh, developed some great partnerships with Preservation Maryland with the Anna Genealog Genealogical Society thank you Tina Simmons out there <laughs> I'll be giving you another shout out in a bit um, just uh, because this uh, this uh, highway of communication really gives us a chance to make this a database that is useful, that really does help us protect these places. So we decided to go um, by a downloadable form. Um, just we wanted to reach as broad a demographic as possible uh, in terms of who wants to use dig digital technology and who doesn't. Uh, and so we have a downloadable form, form and we also have a uh, online form that's very similar to the one that Alex was talking about. So this is just a screenshot of our, um, our webpage and very easy to get to aacounty.org slash cemeteries. So you can actually get to the form there. 
So the form was designed as a, kind of a two-phase process. The, right now, we're really in phase one, so our big concern is just identifying as many cemeteries as possible and getting that location, get, finding where they are. So that first page uh, of this multi-page form that we have, which is the only pay, uh, bit that's represented in the digital app, um, is our reconnaissance level, which just identifies which cemetery it is, where it is, um, what are the conditions, what are the important bits of information we need to know. And, uh, and once we get all that information, we, we do have these additional pieces to the form where you can uh, document individual markers, you can do site plans, and the more information, the better. That's what we're hoping for, but we're hoping to get at least this reconnaissance level bit of information. Um, so we have our paper form here. Uh, so you can see it's got multiple pages. You can draw a map on the back if you want to of the very, the broad area. And then on this side, you can draw a sketch of the map uh, of the uh, cemetery itself and then really get into individual markers. That's what the remaining uh, pages are for. So this is a form you can download and you can do as much of it as you want. Um, but this is the information that's going to help us refine our database. We also have the um, digital app, which is available just like the SHA one. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but it's it's a website, so you can uh, access it via your form without having to have an additional app downloaded to your form, um, to your phone. Uh, so it's it's an easy way to just get that information to us immediately and directly. Um, so you could take this out in the field and fill it out and then use the form to submit it if you wanted to, <laughs> or just use this in the field. Um, so the our, our hope with this is not only to get that communication um, open, that open channel, have that, you know, uh, have people reporting to us and recording these cemeteries um, for us, but it's also to get those numbers because to have any kind of policy decisions made, people always ask um, who make those policy decisions, show me the numbers, <laughs> show me the statistics. So uh, with these forms, we're getting those tick boxes so we can start showing statistics. Like we have this many endangered cemeteries, this many um, cemeteries that need um, you know, fencing, this many that need historic designations. So just once you start getting that kind of information, you can really um, start to formulate decisions and prioritize resources and hopefully uh, also lend weight to making um, policy changes that give you more resources. So um, uh, one thing we wanted to chat a little about um, is just, uh, as I, I mentioned, state law isn't that, doesn't have that many protections um, for cemeteries, but has um, recently um, acquired a couple new ones, uh, including, um, uh, having the ability for property owners to go to the Maryland Historical Trust to ask them about their cemetery for conservation advice if it's 50 years or older. Uh, we also um, have in uh, state law an ability to request access to a property owner and that property owner, if you are um, considered a person in interest who is you know, a descendant of the cemetery, who has a cultural affiliation with the cemetery you know, or research interest, um, or uh, want, you wants to do a community service and maintain the cemetery, um, all of those factors, when you go to the property owner, you can say, can I do this? You can also tell them the state removes any liability on you if we have this agreement where you say, I can go and visit this, um, this cemetery. And that's a, a great way to uh, um, relieve potentially any wariness on the property owner's part. Um, it's also important to talk to the property owner to gain access for one, you don't want to be trespassing, but also they often have information about the cemetery out there. So they're an important source. Uh, so this is um, just a extract from Maryland state law that talks about getting access to a cemetery and they have a form as an example that you could print out and just provide to the property owner if you want. So you could have an agreement on paper, but I just wanted to let you know, there is this bit in there in case property owners wary of having you come and visit. Um, so the uh, the bits of information that we really wanted to get 
um, was particularly also the condition of these cemeteries. So here I, I just put in the quick definitions and you'll see this in your resource guide that explains those definitions. I was trying to narrow them down so we could be less subjective and just have it like <laughs> those four categories. Looks really good, looks really bad. And this is our definition of how that looks. Um, and by having these statistics, we can start informing our policy decisions. Now, the, um, the cemeteries that are the most endangered are these historic family cemeteries or these unmarked cemeteries, which we'll talk about a little bit too. So I've, I've only got the two cemetery types here, but the resource guide actually does show you all the uh, definitions for the other cemetery types as well in the form, uh, which is one of your handouts. Um, but the, uh, the, these family cemeteries, it seems like, um, well, recently Tina Simmons just provided me, since we started this program last October, uh, Tina Simmons and Dennis Green provided me with, I think, about 100 handwritten forms in which they were looking at specifically just uh, the majority of which were family cemeteries. And these are all cemeteries that are usually about a quarter acre, that usually have about 10 or so stones, and, um, and they often have unmarked graves that are older. Uh, so it's uh, those kind of cemeteries that are hidden in the woods on those rural plantations or um, or possibly uh, no longer have those stones because of a few hundred years have gone by. Those are the cemeteries that we are really worried about because they are those small areas that can easily be impacted if we don't know where they are. And then that's the same with the burials of enslaved people who often you could find on uh, plantations that had enslaved workers, their burial place might be located in the vicinity of the family cemetery, but they did not have a fence. They did not have stones. So in order to protect that, you need to know it's there. <laughs> um, there. There might be some vegetation or some natural stones or the wooden markers that used to be there are gone, but, um, but you might see depressions. There are clues that can help you identify these um, in tandem with archival evidence. So oral tradition is a big way that a lot of these cemeteries have been identified. So we're hoping with through this process to get that oral tradition on paper and uh, have that come to us in our office. So uh, having an inventory of what's at the cemetery site is really important. And um, so it's good to have a count of markers, tombstones, and headstones, but I just wanted to remind everyone that a tombstone does not always equal a grave, and a grave does not always have a tombstone because tombstones move. So um, it's it's just good to have that data, and over time, I'm not worried about getting repeat documentation because that's one of the things we also wanna see. It's just um, how these cemeteries are changing as well over time. Hopefully they change for the better as people become aware of their existence, but uh, often, these condition assessments so show the increasing impact of neglect. So I, I know we're starting to get along in time and we wanna to get to the Q&A. So just the condition characteristics, that's another factor we wanted to get in there. Um, generally, we're seeing that a lot of these um, cemeteries have broken fences um, or they're over, overgrown. And with that information, we can start making um, uh, uh, recommendations. And the assessment too, those hazards are how imminently are these cemeteries being threatened? So this is that data we're capturing. So are they abandoned? Does that mean no one knows they're there? We just have found it by accident. Should we identify it with a fence or something so it doesn't get run over by ATV uh, races or something like that? Um, so having this information helps us prioritize um, our decision-making process. Um, and then that leads us to the recommendations. And this is something I really um, hope that every uh, every person who fills out the form can think about because this is um, this will help us guide how we need to go, um, what we need to do to help this cemetery. Um, so just to wrap up really quickly, uh, this has been a really exciting project. Um, one of the first challenges is really you know just having that lack of financial resources. But my goal with this is to hopefully demonstrate why we need those financial resources. So uh, I, um, uh, Tina Simmons and Dennis Green of the Anne Arundel Genealogical Society have already provided us with so much information on, um, on so many uh, sites, but I'm hoping that we can get more citizen involvement as well to, um, to help us get 
uh, feet on the ground. There's only three people in my office. Um, I work on cemeteries, and so I could not have done this without the help of par uh, great partners like like Tina and Dennis and um, Preservation Maryland. So uh, uh, just to run down through a couple of challenges, <laughs> not everyone likes digital apps. So one of the things that I've run into is having to um, get this data inputted, data entry into a usable and standardized system, because that's our end goal is to make this also part of a statewide database and have this data be transferable. Um, we have uh, so many more capabilities for data sharing at this point. And right now we don't have a statewide repository of cemeteries, but by putting these pieces together, we're, we're definitely moving in that direction. And the state highway started that, um, you know, we're just, uh, uh, that, that hopefully will be the end result. And uh, so with this, you know, we need follow-up. Once we have this information, we'll need follow-up. So that's a whole other phase of this. Uh, I just wanted to point out a couple of resources really quickly as I wrap up that we also have, um, you know, this documentation, this is a, a great way to engage the public to ask them to communicate with us directly. But there are other ways to also communicate the story and the importance of these cemeteries. And we've been using um, story maps to start uh, telling stories in the county of, um, of uh, heritage and and local history. And uh, the African-American heritage story map that we did for the Four Rivers um, Heritage Trail in, um, includes a number of cemeteries as well that speak to African-American um, history. And so this is a really neat platform to, to talk about these cemeteries. And you start seeing those connections when you're putting them in a map. When you start having that data all together, that landscape starts to become so real and so tangible. Those people in that cemetery, their cousins are over there, and this community was built in between these cemeteries. So this is uh, a powerful thing. We also have a resource guide online. I think it might be one of your hand handouts too, that talks a little bit about our legislation here in the county and gives you some tips on conservation. I just wanted to give out a, a shout out to uh, Tina Simmons who just put together um, this also hard copy booklet that we have available or downloaded from online of Anne Arundel County Cemetery Art, which is an example of just once you start synthesizing information, you start seeing these patterns and just looking at the iconography of these um, tombstones is a, a fascinating look into the history of just manufacture, um, uh, religious sentiment, all these items, uh, all these bits of information that we haven't had a chance to really look at in a comprehensive way. So very exciting times for cemeteries. <laughs> so just to wrap up, you cannot preserve a cemetery if you do not know where it is. Uh, cemeteries need the, um, the help of multiple people, individual community and government involvement are all needed for this. And then uh, some cemeteries, you know, things are going to get lost over time, but at least we can preserve the information. And that's what this documentation is for. So thank you. <laughs> it's great to chat with everybody. I look forward to the Q&A. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stacey. We really appreciate it. And yes, we, um, we were not able to fit the art guide in your handouts. We're only allowed five handouts. So, um, but that is a link we can send out um, with the email because, yeah, that is pretty fantastic too. And it is available as the PDF online. So, we'll make sure to share that. Um, our questions are we've got lots of questions, but please feel free. Um, we can, um, if there's some we can't get to, we can always um, get in touch with you afterwards with answers to your questions. So please do submit your your questions um, questions now. Um, so I'm going to start actually with one. Uh, you kind of talked about um, the data sharing, and that kind of is what the first one speaks to. It's uh, from someone in Montgomery County who's talking about how there's a GIS layer for all cemeteries. And if that's something that SHA can get the data and just import into the statewide GIS, or does it have to be done separately? Um, yes, I, I, Montgomery County does have a great GIS layer for their cemeteries. Um, I think Carroll County has a great one off the top of my head. And some of the things too, yes, in uh, in theory, in the future, that's what we'll do, give or take, figure out a way to, to take that data um, and, and combine it, but we haven't um, gotten to the to the nuts and bolts part of that yet, figuring out how to take the software, how to make it compatible. Um, that's a ways off um, in the future, but in, in theory, yeah, we don't have plans um, to, you know, have to redo all that data or retake it or anything. We'll figure out how to get all the data to play nice with each other. Um, but we are, um, 
not not quite there yet. And I think particularly because it's such a complicated issue, we're um, content to kind of punt on that and and focus our efforts on kind of making sure people can sign up for it, making sure it works. Um, and I think paralleling with what um, what, what Stacy's doing down in Anne Arundel County too, I think it's a great kind of not test case, but something we can work on uh, together to kind of to see if they can go parallel and, and how well that can can work and before we apply it to other things. But uh, big picture, yeah, that's the plan. But it, it, it's a, this level is very much in the future. Um, so the next question is about kind of, um, I guess, cemeteries that might be on a border. If there's a cemetery that's not with entirely within the state of Maryland, um, is that something that can still be recorded? Is there any kind of data sharing with other states in those cases? Um, yeah, there's definitely something that could be recorded if it's not entirely, if, if it's partially in the state of Maryland, that counts as the state of Maryland. Um, so yes, um, that is certainly something that could be recorded. Um, I also wanted to say real quick while I have you all here, which is don't go into private property without the permission of the property owner. Um, don't do it. It's a, it is a crime, and you should not commit crimes. Please don't do that. Uh, you know, one of the real challenges in doing this is finding out who owns the cemetery and getting in contact with the owner of the property. It is, uh, as you probably know better than I do, a real can be a real challenge and, and not the most fun part of it. But it's it's very important because don't commit crimes. Um, yeah. Don't commit crimes. Don't don't do them. Or this crime in particular. Please don't. <laughs> uh, and it, and it's a. I mean, it's it's funny, but it's a serious issue. Like don't trespass on someone's property without their permission. It's not polite and it is illegal. Don't do it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you have to be careful too when you're dealing with cemeteries because there are also, are also a, um, you know, that fine line of where you're going in to help the cemetery for preservation purposes, but you can veer into the desecration if, a, you know, if there's an angry property owner, even vegetation removal can be considered desecration and has a fine, I think, of $500 if it's vegetation that's original to the cemetery. So, uh, and also uh, lifting uh, tombstones and um, and resetting them, that's something you definitely want to possibly coordinate with a professional because that also can you know, lead into some trouble archaeologically or, or with desecration. So definitely get the property owner's uh, uh, you know, permission first, and uh, and we're here as resources, the MHD is there as resources um, as well um, to help guide you on whatever your cemetery project is. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a question a little bit, this might be a little bit of the mechanics, but it is um, into how I think kind of how this is, um, how this is shared back kind of to, docu to data sharing is are the cemeteries that are entered into the SHA database, are they going to be given an archeological site number um, so that they can also be included in the Medusa GIS? That's a great question. Um, we, the cemeteries typically do not get archeological site numbers. Um, it's just how the uh, mechanics of uh, cultural resources in Maryland works. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so cemeteries themselves do not get uh, archaeological site numbers from the math, from the Maryland Historical Trust. Um, uh, and what was the second part of that question? Um, so that was just, yeah, if it could be included in the uh, state's Medusa uh, GIS. Oh, the Medusa. Uh, yeah, and I think, um, you know, were it to go in the Medusa, um, I think uh, Howard County does a thing where they they denote which tax parcel has a cemetery in it, but doesn't tell you where in the parcel it is as a way to to deal with privacy concerns. Um, in the future, that might be something similar to how Medusa does archaeological sites, which is they don't tell you the exact location in some circumstances, but the general area. Yeah, um, yeah that is definitely um, a, a potential means of sharing that information in the public is putting it in the, in the Medusa system. Um, it's one of the options available uh, to us. Um, we haven't had any... Uh, Communications with the with the with the trust um, about that, and the, that's another one of those kind of uh, things to, to to work out in the future. When we're talking about the storage and dissemination of this information, and I think we're definitely working with uh, the trust um, to 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 deal with these issues and talk about these issues. I, I think that really hits at the heart of a lot of what we're thinking about too right now, and how to share this data because archaeology sites aren't shared with the public. You have to be. Uh, it's not. Uh, Part of the Freedom of Information Act, you have to be a professional archaeologist and be given access to the archaeological database um, of Medusa. So there, there is a, a, you know, 
it's the, is it better to have these sites protected and hidden in an archaeology database in which you end up with the majority of them being unmarked cemeteries, African American cemeteries, um, uh, or uh, you know family hidden family cemeteries, um, or do you have it in the historic properties database where everyone can see it? And you could argue, since everyone sees it, everyone knows it's there. It's actually better protected because it's an asset that people know about or a, a place of remembrance that people know about. But then there's the argument it could not be. So this is part of the process that we're really starting, this conversation that we're having right now um, with Alex, with Preservation Maryland, and um, going forward, that's that's part of our long-term planning is just figuring out those nuances. And it's different um, different uh, audiences too. You know, for uh, if you're looking at uh, road planning, for instance, or or planning for developers, um, you know, that's a circumstance where that, particularly for road planning for SHA, where location information would be shared so they know on widening a road and putting in a road, okay, here's where the cemeteries are. That um, is information where the trick is the data itself from the app is generated by uh, you know, people who care deeply about cemeteries and want to research them and want to study them. And then you're saying, hey, collect all this data for us, but you don't get to use it how you want um, isn't nice. And it's also not a great way to run a survey. If people who if the people who are doing the survey don't get to use the data on the survey, they're not going to want to do it. Um, Typically, so you know it's it's a real uh, it's a real tricky issue um, that that we're thinking about and, and working through and and um, kind of trying to figure out the best way to go forward for all these things. But I think it speaks to also sort of the different layers of cemetery documentation, right? So you have like SHA who's working really just on the location, really the location. Um, the boundaries, you know, really where it is and not necessarily, you know, the next step of conservation or preservation, right? Mm -hmm. And so the SHA project, and this is something um, when we, we did a number of regional workshops about the, about the uh, SHA um, platform, and that's something that came up a lot and where, uh, where you have a great deal of documentation from private groups like the coalition or from you know local groups like um like genealogical societies historical societies that um you know are really focused on you know uh the the art of the of the stones or you know the the who is actually buried there um you know that sort of information that sort of um that conservation research historical information of it is a separate is not entirely separate but it is a separate issue than the pure documentation of where it is um and so i think you know in the preservation world we are working to sort of merge the two because in order like stacy said to have um good legislation and policy surrounding historic uh, surrounding uh, cemetery preservation you need that location data and you also need you know sort of the um the the research side of it of you know who's buried there the earliest you know date the latest date things things along those lines um so it is a, a, a really multi-layered process to get all of this done. And, you know, it, it seems a lot of times like we're, you know, equivocating a little bit about, oh, well, we'll get to that or, oh, it's more complicated than you think, but it really truly is. <laughs> um, and so, and I think anybody who's worked it with cemetery documentation or cemetery preservation really, really knows. I mean, you want to talk about red tape. This is, um, this is something that you really have to wade through a lot of different layers of not only sort of, you know, the moral aspect of, of saving it, but then also really the, the legal, um, private property, all of it. So, um, I know that, um, the coalition has really worked, um, at the state level and local policy level and trying to get access, um, for people who want to, um, help, um, maintain or preserve or protect these, these burial sites, um, and I'm sure you know any anyone from there can tell you how difficult it is just even wrapping your head around how you would legislate it. So in a way that protects people's private property, um, you know, maintains, like Stacy was saying, the protection of you know not making it public information. I mean, 
I went out one, you know, one or two times with the our cemetery documentation specialist, and uh, there was um, desecration. You know, people had dug up. You know, in in 2020, <laughs> people were were doing this. It seems like something that is is so crazy. But you know, d digging up caskets, knocking over headstones, things like that. So. Um, and that's why I think these conversations are so important because you kind of have to talk through it in order to reach some sort of um, consensus or or find our way forward on how best to do this because I think we all agree how important it is. It's just getting to that end point and and the work that the State Highway Administration, Stacy, you've done in in Anne Arundel County and everybody who's done it at the you know the private local um, level, you know it's hours and hours uh, you know hundreds of hours of of time and and labor um doing it and i and i think you know even if we can't come out of this today with a, an exact answer of the best way forward for a statewide database or or whatever um just acknowledging that we've got so many enthusiastic people and professionals working on it that I, I, you know, I have faith that one day we'll, we'll figure this out. We'll crack it. <laughs> so I know we're at two o'clock right now, but I'm hoping I've got one more question. I really want to make sure we get to, and I'm hoping you guys can maybe have five minutes just to stay on to answer this question. And if I did not get to your question, um, I am going to send these out. If there's any kind of last minute call, I can send these out to Stacey and to Alex and to Ellie. Um, and get some feedback. But I think this is kind of one of the the big ones that I want to make sure we do don't leave before um, we talk about, which is that if someone is um, aware of or trying to help a privately owned uh, cemetery, um, what what can be their, what should be kind of their first steps? Hmm. Is this for someone who owns a cemetery or? <laughs> No, if they're trying to help, I do not believe yeah. this. I do not believe this person is the owner of the cemetery. Um, but someone that wants to help, um, that someone wants to help is now. I and I will say I'm going to add in. I'm preservation issues manager. Um, if you are with a nonprofit and you have um, and you have owner permission, because we do require owner cooperation, um, we do have a, a heritage fund grant program which has funded um, cemeteries that's biannual. Um, so I'd be happy to talk to. You anybody out there who is part of a nonprofit and um, is working with an owner or owns the cemetery um, on that. Um, but if if that's not the case, if it's just an individual who's like, I see the cemetery, I want to help, it's not in my ownership, um, what can they, what steps should they take? I think literally what I would do is sit at the computer and Google where you are and the words genealogy or historical society and find a local organization that can help put you in contact with people who have the knowledge and um, contacts and the know-how to, to help you move forward. Um, if I was in Anne Arundel County, I would uh, you know, eventually try to talk to Tina Simmons. Hi, Tina. You know, at the, uh, just, yeah, just kind of reach out to, to local, as local as you can get, uh, people who, who deal with genealogy and, and cemeteries and, and historical preservation and see and ask them uh what you can do and, and they can point you in the direction of uh what your what your next step should be and if you don't know who that is literally google um whatever county you're in what town you're in and the words genealogy and, genealogy and the society. handouts i provided also has a links of resource uh links to some resources including the maryland historical trust which has a cemetery preservation planning project page and they have some great advice on what you can do um, uh, to treat a historic cemetery in a sensitive way and um, what types of actions you can take. The Coalition to Protect Maryland Burial Sites is another saying. great group that's statewide. They Highly. also have a mini grant program <laughs> and uh, from through the Trader Foundation Partnership. And they uh, their webpage is wonderful. It has resources that identify county legislations, um, county uh, uh, groups that are cemetery affiliates, um, and uh, you know, that, that is a really good place to start. The Maryland Office of Cemetery Oversight, um, which manages active cemeteries, also has some FAQs that can, can help you too in uh, uh, looking at just state law and the things you can or cannot do. So, uh, and then also the local government, like aacounty.org slash cemeteries. Um, we also have a volunteer program. If you're interested in preservation and documentation, we can put you on our listserv so you can find at some of our events and, um, and, 
also document <laughs> through our web page. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been fascinating. And we have, um, I will be sending an email out to all of you panelists here because um, we have just a ton of questions. Um, and I really appreciate you being here the, to everyone who attended for being with us today. And to let you know that um, this has been recorded. And so you'll be getting an email um, in the next couple of days. Um, that will have a, a copy of the recording along with the links that, um, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the handouts that were provided um, and more information on Stacy and Alex and ways to get in touch with them. Um, and of course, you can always reach out, reach out to Preservation Maryland as well. Um, it's also gonna go up on our website if you want to uh, send anyone that you're working with or anyone who you feel like could benefit from this presentation as well. Um, so thank you guys so much for being here with us today and thank you everyone who attended and um, we hope to see you at future sessions. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>